And to your point, serve and serve receive is one of those details, but it's also a huge focus. It is the main thing that can make or break your offense on a night out to play. First point of the evening for Duke, and it is Brianna Goss, one of the best freshmen in the ACC, a two-time ACC Freshman of the Week award winner this season with the Blue Devils on the board. And look for Duke to run their offense through the middle if they have the pass to do so. There's Reese Robbins, and she is blocked. Duke, statistically the worst blocking team in the ACC against Louisville, statistically the best blocking team in the ACC. But it is the Blue Devils with the block here to tie it at two. Here's Looper. And Rachel Richardson had to hang back for that ball. And it results in a point to Louisville on a net violation. Nyalise Cabello, speaking of superstar freshman in the ACC, a four-time ACC Freshman of the Week award winner this year, perhaps a candidate for the ACC Freshman of the Year award, and she takes aim from behind the service line. There's Sherman with a defensive touch for Louisville. And Elena Scott will bump set to Sofia Maldonado-Diaz. And the big lefty swing for the Blue Devils, resulting in the kill from Kerry Keith, a junior from Pacific Palisades, California. Keith takes a lot of swings for the Blue Devils offense. You know the ball is going to her. What adjustments do you make to stop her from hitting super efficient for the night? The Blue Devils hope for a big night from her. There's Maldonado Diaz with the kill for Louisville. Danny Busboom Kelly said she is primed for a monster finish to her season for the senior transfer from Arizona. And that is due in large part to the fact that she has just now really gotten comfortable with her new surroundings, joining this very well-established Louisville program and an established team as well. Just an incredible addition out of the transfer portal for this Louisville side. There's Charity Looper athletically striking from the back row. And that's one of the details and adjustments that Louisville wants to focus on. They don't always use the back row as a big offensive weapon, but at this point in the season, you want to make sure any weapon that you may need down the stretch has been match tested. There's Keith on the right side for Duke. Kerry Keith, 18 kills and a recent loss against SMU, one of the bright spots in that loss for the Blue Devils. And I like her approach, her last two swings, she's challenged the block. Sometimes the mindset can be to come in against a number one blocking team and avoid the block, but Keith is challenging going right in and off the block. There's Anna DeBeer's first action of the evening. Speaking of this Louisville senior class that has been so very sensational, perhaps no one more important to that success than Anna DeBeer, senior night coming up on Sunday when the Cardinals host a ranked North Carolina team in what should be an enticing late season matchup. Another point here to Louisville to extend their early lead to three. And Camden Schrand will continue to serve for the Cardinals. Had 12 digs, a career high, in a recent victory over Syracuse on Louisville's recent road trip. That one off the block for a Duke point. You see Ngazi Ilo go on a slide there. Duke doesn't always run a lot behind the setter because when Keith's back row, they try to leave room for her to be able to back row attack as well. However, that was a great slide, a different look there for Ilo. You see Rachel Richardson back behind the service line, a senior from the DMV outside of Washington, D.C. And another point to Duke, Ilo gets credit for it. Richardson is just six months removed from a double hip surgery after she tore both labrums. And coming off of those injuries, enjoying a very successful senior year. Off speed there from Anna DeBeer for the kill.
Beer hit 381 last weekend with a combined 21 kills, but has failed to hit double figures in two of her last three, which is notable considering her st high standard for success. Maldonado Diaz served for Louisville, and that one off the fingertips of Nyalese Cabello and Kara Cressy. And Taylor Williams gets credit for the kill, the freshman from California for Duke. And that high off the block swing is going to be a focus here for Duke. We saw them during warmups using big mats, and the only goal was to hit the top of the mat, like you're to simulate that hitting high and off the block. Therefore, we might see some extra challenges tonight, too, because that's usually the play that gets challenged, right? It was off speed a moment ago for Anna DeBeer, but that was full strength from her right hand. DeBeer off to a quick start, three for three with a dig as well. There's Williams again. Great chop over the block. That again went over the block, but she was able to take a little bit of speed off of it and relocate the ball from cross to down the line. Williams with six combined kills across five sets last weekend against SMU and Pitt. Here's Keith, and that's off of the hands of Kara Cressy down for a kill. And Duke hanging right with number three Louisville in the early going here in set one. And we talked earlier about Keith challenging the block, and I really like that approach. But from the Louisville perspective, I think they're going to talk about some discipline on the block, making sure that they're pressing over, finishing their hands, because Keith has had three kills by going off and into the Louisville block. Jolene Nagel marking down that that was the second service error for her team. The kind of mistake that her team can seldom afford on an evening like this against a team like Louisville. There's Charity Looper. Second kill. Robbins and Sherman up for the denial for Louisville. Danny Busboom Kelly said this week that teams have begun to set away from Reese Robbins because she has such an impact on that right side for the Cardinals defensively. I wouldn't want to hit a ball on the other side, so I can see that for sure. And what that means for teams is that they're doing something different. A lot of times the left side hitter is the go-to hitter for an opposing offense. So if you have a strong right side block, the other you make the opponents do something they're not used to. Run more back row, run more right side, maybe force some middle. And so it's not just about what Reese Robbins is doing, but it's what it's making the whole offense on the other side adjust to. Forcing opponents to be a little more creative in terms of how they attack Louisville's defense. Yeah, and a lot of times that creativity is great. It's like running a trick play in football. It can be awesome, but it can also lead to higher errors and just stuff that you haven't practiced as much. Here's Cabello. Richardson with the big swing. Here's Looper. Richardson again. This time Duke goes to Keith. And Elena Scott with a defensive play. Big swing from Anna DeBeer and a kill to end that rally. Louisville stars showing up for that point. And great block touches throughout that rally by Louisville. It really allowed them to have transitionable balls and great swings from many different angles during the rally. Keith, look at Scott. We highlighted her in the open for a reason. But DeBeer cannot make it count, hitting that one into the net. A big thing that Louisville's offense prides themselves in is giving no free balls. Even after a big dig, they want to... 2005 to 2011. As Duke works their way back to that spot, it's been incredible to see her experience, knowledge of the game, and leadership here on the sidelines today. Thanks, Riley. Certainly this Duke team 
will be hoping to finish the season a little bit more strongly than they began it. A team that was picked ninth in the preseason poll in the ACC, but off to a five and nine start in league play and a nine and 16 record overall. Like we said, Steph, it's not even necessarily a win today for Duke that could make a big difference as they finish their year, but a strong performance against a top three team like Louisville on the road might be the boost that this team needs to finish 2024 on the right foot. Yeah, and it seems a little counterintuitive, but I think these are still the games you look forward to, that moment to really see how you stack up with the top, with the top of the top, and figuring out what that means for your program, for the future, for the rest of the season. I think this is where your season is kind of possibly defined by a huge win. And Duke taking a timeout here with Louisville ahead by six. I mentioned that Duke was picked ninth in the preseason while Louisville was picked third. So both teams a little bit off of that preseason prediction, but it's still very much a wide open ACC there at the top. You've got Pitt and Louisville both with one loss. They will face each other one more time here in Louisville later this season. And then Stanford and SMU lingering right behind. A couple of losses back. They're hoping that Pitt and Louisville stumble a little bit down the stretch. And this is where the ACC is so unique, too. They don't play a balanced schedule. Everybody plays everybody, but then the duplicate games are based on how you finished last year. So the top teams play each other again. Stanford is in that mix of the quote-unquote top teams from last year, even though they weren't in the ACC. But SMU is not. So it'll be interesting if they can kind of sneak from that fourth place spot and maybe maybe work their way up in the final standings based on their last couple matches. But really, if everything goes according to plan, everything goes as expected in the ACC, the title will come down to that Wednesday, November 27th matchup. That's the night before Thanksgiving between this Louisville team and Pitt. It was a fabulous affair a couple of weeks back in Pennsylvania when Louisville took Pitt to five sets and lost in heartbreaking fashion. Danny Busboom Kelly and her team will be looking to get back against the Panthers in that one here in a couple of weeks' time. And that's the goal. That's a huge match right there. And then Louisville has to go on the road after Thanksgiving and play at Stanford, which is not something to overlook either. Louisville on a 3-0 run, which is what forced the timeout from Jolene Nagel on the Duke bench, make it a 4-0 run because Maldonado Diaz strikes with power off of her right hand. And we mentioned the details being a big deal at this point in the season for those top teams, but also those in-match adjustments. You like to see them be able to pull away during this part of a set. Charity Looper back behind the service line. She had three aces against Boston College last weekend. They Match in which Louisville as a team had 10 overall. Was that in? It was. Or now they reverse course. The point to Duke after the initial point to Louisville's side. The initial call going to Louisville's side. And that draws a wry smile from Danny Busboom Kelly. Hannah Sherman. And now, another point to Duke. Net violation from Hannah Sherman on the block. But in that point, Mylon Gottschall diving to the floor. We've talked about Elena Scott, and we've seen her put her skills on display. There's Gottschall, the freshman. Likewise for Duke. But it's backed up by a service error yet again for the Blue Devils. And you've talked a little bit about Duke's serving errors. I like that they're serving aggressive, if that's the point. But the timing of those serving errors after, as you said, a great hustle play by the defense. We forced a hitter to hit out of bounds um, in Anna DeBeer on the outside, and then that missed serve. Those, those are the timing situations you don't want to see as a coach. You want to prolong your team's runs. A block for the Cardinals. What they do best right there on display from one of the players that does it almost better than anybody in the country, certainly in the ACC, Kara Cressy, second in the league in blocks. And you saw Cressy just dive out to the outside to fill that hole. Louisville five points away. Here's Anna DeBeer. And Anna DeBeer cross court 
gets the better of Mylon Godshaw for the point. Great shot from Anna DeBeer. She was worried more about location there. This is a powerful swing, but not Anna's top speed. You see her kind of pull back, but not use her body as much, and really locate to the sharp angle. DeBeer, five kills over 400 hitting percentage. And it's a Camden Strand ace that forces a second timeout from Jolene Nagel on the Duke bench. First ace of the night for either side. And this set starting to get away from the Blue Devils. And Louisville looking mighty comfortable as they prepare for a ranked matchup on Sunday against North Carolina. Anna DeBeer will be honored ahead of that one for the senior from right here in Louisville. One of the best to ever do it for this Cardinals program. Has been a part of over 120 wins and is inching very close to very exclusive territory she's a couple of digs away Steph from 1,000 for her career you see the kill numbers that she's been able to put together over the season over a thousand kills for her career very close to a thousand digs for her career here and that's that's the exact story that is Anna DeBeer that complete player she contributes to the match however her team needs sometimes it's kills Sometimes it's digs, sometimes and it's just being an emotional leader. And sometimes earlier this season, it was showing her teammates how to kind of grind it out when you're not having a great game. And I think that has really paid off for this Louisville team. Anna struggled a little bit in a few matches early in the season, but she really gritted through, did what her team needed, and led them to this point. You saw as she heated up in the second half of the year. At one point had 10 straight games, 10 straight matches in which he had double figure kills. Certainly looks like the best version of Anna DeBeer right now for Louisville. And it couldn't be a better time for it as they try and work their way to a number one seed in the NCAA tournament in a few weeks time. And she's having a terrific night. And that's been her motivation for coming back for her fifth season, was that the Final Four is hosted in Louisville. She's a hometown girl that wants to play in front of a home crowd on the biggest stage. Assumption High School, one of the powerhouse programs in local high school volleyball. And Anna DeBeer, a big reason for that success as well, as well as the success of this Louisville Cardinals program. Brief hesitation after the timeout from the officials, but now Camden Trand, given the go-ahead, to take aim and Louisville three points away from an opening set against Duke. Make it two on an attack error from the Blue Devils. They were confirming a sub from Duke as Riley Cadle has joined us in the game. And Camden Trand with some fans in the stands as well. That's gotta be a custom outfit there with Trand across the front of that sweatshirt. And on cue, another ace for Trand. And that brings the fans to their feet with Louisville on set point. Here's Richardson for Duke to try and keep the Cardinals at bay. Schran diving to the floor to keep the ball alive, and it results in an Anna DeBeer kill. And Louisville hasn't dropped a set for 14 against this Duke program. Weapons that can do a lot of Around the block, we see off speed from the left side, from the back row. And the biggest thing about Anna DeBeer that doesn't show up on the highlight reel and doesn't show up on the stat sheet is the load she carries for this team in leadership and in serve receive. Four digs away from 1,000 for her career after she's got a pair of digs on her ledger tonight. She would be just the fourth Cardinal player in the 1,000-1,000 club, if you want to think about it that way, over 1,000 kills and 1,000 digs while wearing Cardinal red and black. It doesn't Just, work out perfectly, but it's like averaging a double-double, like that, for your that kind career. of idea, That's exactly you know? it, yeah. Super cool. But needless to say, perhaps we've belabored the point, one of the greatest Cardinals ever. Another player that can lay claim to that title, Elena Scott, 
potentially a National Player of the Year award winner come the season's end. She's a candidate for it, a semifinalist for it. More on that a little bit later in the broadcast. Louisville hitting 364 as a team in that opening set against Duke's hitting percentage of just 034. That illustrates the dominance that the Cardinals were able to put on display as Ellie Glock, the redshirt junior from Nebraska, back behind the service line to get set two underway for the Cardinals. Does Duke have a response? Not yet, because Kara Cressy back into the act with a block. This is a solo block out of the middle, disciplined by Cressy, staying with her hitter and able to shut down the one by herself. But a point back to Duke on a Louisville service error, returning the favor after Duke committed four of those in the first set. And we see Hamlin hitting outside for Duke. Here's Taylor Williams. Anna DeBeer as Louisville was just a little bit out of sorts with their passing there, but they're able to get the ball over. And a real chance here for Reese Robbins. Here's DeBeer. And DeBeer continues to have the hot hand. This is another thing Elena Scott does so well. You see her take that ball overhead like the setter that she was in high school. And Anna DeBeer is able to hit a ball down the line, not just roll a ball over on an out of system swing. Yeah, the change of position for Elena Scott, such a part of her story as she has become, in the words of her head coach, the best libero in the country. Well, in high school, she was a setter. And Louisville saw something in her, even as a high school player when they were recruiting her, that led Danny Busboom Kelly and her staff to believe that Elena Scott could be a very impactful libero. Not sure if they saw the best libero in the country coming for Elena Scott, but that's proven to be true. I think Coach Busboom would say she did see that. What do you think? But, but to your point, one of the things that Nice hole there for Charity Looper, able to take that in-system ball and turn it into a kill. But to continue on what we were talking about with Elena, one of the things that makes her the best libero in the country is her ability to do more than just first contact. And that's what you would recruit a libero for. But those setting, that setting ability, that ability to keep her team in system, even when they technically should be out of system, is what makes her the best libero in the country. You see the digs per set. Louisville, a team that plays so well, accumulates so many sweeps. They've had 10 sweeps in ACC play this year that you can't just look at total digs, the, the countable stats over the course of the season. Digs per set, Elena Scott is as good as anybody in the country. Robbins off hands for the Cardinals. And it's a great start to set two for Louisville. And speaking liberals, you'll see on that last play that Duke had Tomlick in in six, playing middle back, just looking for kind of a different look from their libero position. And Tomlack now heads to the bench as Mylon Godshaw, who we highlighted opposite Elena Scott in the open, heads back to serve. She's got a bright future in front of her, Godshaw, considering the success that she has put up as a freshman. It's a Duke team that leans on their freshmen quite a bit. And they've certainly taken some lumps this season, some growing pains, but Jolene Nagel hopes that that growth will come to count for something in a couple of years' time, led by young players like God Shaw. When we talked about what do you get out of a game like this if you're not competing for the top of that ACC, and that's what you get. You get such fantastic experience for your freshmen. Not every team even has the chance to compete against multiple top 10 schools like ACC schools do. So that's a huge benefit for your freshmen and for the future success of your program. One of those freshmen, Avery Hamlin, into the game for Duke, had a touch there offensively. 
And here she is again with the swing, but it's a block for the Cardinals to deny her. Duke takes a timeout. It's a 3-0 run for Louisville and a seven-point cushion as they've already taken set one. Of the blocking game, look at Ellie Glock go into the seats, but the hustle does not pay off in the end for Louisville, but it will still draw a round of applause from the fans here at LNN Federal Credit Union Arena who always appreciate some hustle out there on the court. And we were talking about this during the break, but those hustle plays are really what bring energy, not just to the team, but also to the crowd and the whole environment in the gym. But Kara Cressy last year was second on the team for Louisville with 111 blocks. She's already surpassed that number of over 120 blocks if you count her total tonight. Part of the reason that Louisville has been resurgent as one of the best blocking teams in the country. There's an attack error on a good looking swing from Reese Robbins from the right side, but just couldn't keep it in play. Looper, a big swing for the Cardinals, and it results in a Louisville point. On a net violation. And the moment that we were speaking about took place just a moment ago. The family of Anna DeBeer with a couple of high fives. They'd have to do that about a thousand more times if they wanted to match what Anna's been able to do in her career. But now the fourth member of the 1,000-1,000 club in Louisville volleyball history with her 1,000th dig earlier in this set. Duke with a point back in Ghazi Elo with the swing. And that's the middle offense that the Blue Devils want to focus on. Elo, a redshirt sophomore from Peach Tree City, Georgia, has had four matches this year in which she's hit double digits in kills. There's Maldonado Diaz flying for the kill. Athletic, acrobatic, aerial assault from Sofia Maldonado Diaz. And Louisville has liked to run this play when Diaz is stacked on the left side. She comes flying for the two ball behind the middle out of that serve receive when they can get a good pass. Maldonado Diaz was all Pac-12 quality at Arizona back when they were part of the Pac-12 in this era of conference realignment. There's Elo. Just all over that ball to smash it down. And great set on that ball from Nikki Quinn, getting up, saving that ball without being over the net and able to bring it back. Quinn, the redshirt freshman from California. And a Sherman the swing off the block. And Sherman heads to the bench, having added to her total tonight. Third kill on just six swings. One of a number of Louisville players with outstanding hitting percentages tonight for a team that's hitting 432 on the evening. And Camden Schrand, who had a couple of aces in the first set, comes in here with a service error for the Cardinals. And there's Grace Penn. Again, the BC transfer. Played four seasons with Boston College, led them in assists during her sophomore and junior years. And Duke adds a point on an attack error from Louisville, just trying to keep pace with the Cardinals here in set two. And he talks about Penn being back in. The Blue Devils are running a 6 2 right now to have a little bit more blocking, I'm assuming, in the front row against this Louisville offense to deal with that discrepancy that you pointed out with the hitting percentages in set one. And Keefe again able to take a ball 
not necessarily off the Louisville block, but more through the Louisville block, which I think is what Louisville will want to address. Here's Maldonado Diaz. Look at Gottschall diving to the floor. Maldonado Diaz again. That was off the block and it was in play anyway. So the great hustle play from Godshaw led to a free ball, and Louisville was able to have four hitters going at the same time on that play. And then you saw the finish from Maldonado Diaz. It's a wealth of options offensively for Louisville, and that's also by design with the new 6-2 system that Danny Busboom Kelly is using this year. It is so difficult to defend when they have this much talent. And a De Beer took a lot off that one just to tip it over. So this is an interesting rotation for Louisville. They went ahead and subbed Robbins in and took out Cabello for the one rotation she would normally be in the front row to put Robbins in for the block, which leaves Maldonado Diaz as the setter, which we saw in that play and are about to see again. And Maldonado Diaz sets to the beer, sent back that time. Here's De Beer again. Look at Godshaw diving down with the right hand, but to no avail. Great effort and intensity by Duke, but it is another and a De Beer kill. And when you play without a setter, you don't always get the most perfect sets, but De Beer did a great job of adjusting and making a shot that would take the Duke system out of offense, even if they got that double. Nine Dig. kills and six digs for Anna DeBeer, closing in on a double-double with more on Anna's performance. Here's Riley Himmer. At the ninth point in set two, Anna DeBeer became the 12th player in Louisville Royal history to talk about one thousand digs Anna DeBeer with her career double-double is official after she hit 1,000 digs here tonight. She hit over 1,000 kills, a milestone from last year, and she's only one of four Louisville volleyball players to achieve this milestone in program history. And you can hear the crowd cheering for Anna now. She will be rewarded for this milestone on Sunday. Great stuff, Riley, and a great moment there that we heard just a moment ago when Anna DeBeer's milestone was announced to this crowd of around 1,000 here at LNN Federal Credit Union Arena. What a reaction we saw from her as well on the bench. I mean, players players want wins. Anna DeBeer wants wins, but anytime you can get a little recognition for that kind of milestone, it's, it's fun to see. Well, and it's fun to see the teamwork here. It's fun to see how excited her teammates are for her. We just talked about Louisville currently playing without a setter. It's fun to see them want to prolong that rotation. Here's Anna's 1,000th dig that makes it into the record books. Her team didn't know at that moment they kept playing, but then got to celebrate it later with her on the bench. Yeah, do you think she was keeping the tally in her head the Highly whole game long? Highly doubt it. Yeah. Highly doubt it. I, I would have to agree with you for a player that is as competitive and as focused on winning as Anna DeBeer has been and is in her Louisville career. Her parents in the stands that we saw celebrating may have been counting, but I doubt Anna was on the court. And what a winner she's been. Over 120 victories, multiple conference titles, multiple appearances in the national semifinals, and hoping to add another banner at the end of this season. Not just for DeBeer's resume, but for this program's resume. And another ace for the Cardinals out of the timeout. And out of the timeout, the Cardinals switched to Ellie Glock, did sub in for Maldonado Diaz now and is serving. So there is a setter back on the court. But we talked too in the open about this is a time to try all of your different variables and make sure you're able to have all of those in-game adjustments in your pocket. So I like seeing this one little tweak, this one variable from Louisville that maybe they pull out when they really need a bigger block and still their best server down the stretch in a big game in the postseason. Carrie Keefe with the attack error for Duke. And I would like to see Keith to 
continue to challenge that block. She's not as comfortable on the left side. We'll see her run across and hit on the right side a lot, but I like the effectiveness that she has had by hitting into and off of the block. Keith leading the way for Duke so far. Five kills on 15 swings. Also has a dig on her stat line as well. Here she is trying to add to it, but it's another block for Louisville. Overpowering stuff defensively for the Louisville Cardinals here. And again, Keith's just not as comfortable being left-handed out on that left side. And Cressy and Robbins is a huge block to contest against. That one coming short. Nearly an ace for Louisville. Robbins will have the chance to score, but can't keep it in play. And it's a point to Duke to end what was a 7-0 scoring run for U of L. Sixth service error committed by the Blue Devils. And Louisville starting to unload the bench just a little bit. So too is Duke Nikki Underwood out there for the Cardinals. But Peyton Peterson, the true freshman for Louisville. Underwood out there for the Blue Devils, I should say. But Peterson out there for Louisville here. And Pete Kay coming into the match as well to a large cheer from the knowledgeable Louisville fans, replacing Reese Robbins. Her first action of the night for a senior that will be honored on Sunday as well. And trying to make the play there was PK, but Keith had to get creative with that shot, but able to use it successfully. Yeah, great contact on the ball. She was able to get her feet there and make the shot. Kerry Keith from a super athletic family. Has twin sisters who are twins who played at Stanford earlier this decade and her mom Kristen played in the 1996 Olympics as a volleyball player and certainly is added her own story to her family's story in her career at Duke but Kara Cressy writing another line in her story here with the kill and Although, Jolie Nagel up with the green card in her hand might be challenging this year, Steph. Exactly. This was called a touch, and it, the ball landed out in that replay. So, called a touch, and that's what Duke's going to challenge here. Point Louisville. Duke is challenging that there was no touch. Young Park there with the clarification as he will take a look at the monitor. First challenge of the night. You said early, Steph, that we may see a lot of challenges because of the way that these two teams matched up. But it's taken deep into set two for us to see our first. I think it, block touches is kind of what we called, right? Louisville's a very good blocking team. The Duke offense needed to challenge that Louisville block. This was a similar but different situation. Louisville ran multiple middles here with PK being in the game and Kara Cressy. So Cressy's able to come out here on a solo block on a slide and looks like maybe we see some finger movement on the left hand of Hamlin. I'll also say this. This might be a sly move from Jolene Nagel. Already used both of her timeouts. So why not use the challenge? Or try and keep your team in the set. That's the strategic side of things for coaches these days. Another interesting thing we just saw here as that last replay started was that it looks like the line judge originally called it out. So possibly the call was made by the head official that's a touch, which is very, he's very close to the play, only a couple feet away at that point. But we'll see if you watch the contact here and then also watch the line judge. It looks like he calls the ball out. So we may have had differing, differ, differing, opinions. <laughs> differing opinions. Or different opinions. In real time. <laughs> differing ways to say that phrase as well. And look for Duke to overturn this point would give them just the sliver of hope that they could mount to come back in this set. It's been all one-way traffic so far tonight, much as you would have expected considering the way these two teams have gone all year long and the way that this matchup has gone over the last decade as well. 
but if whatever whatever she can do to give her team just the slightest edge. Exactly. I like what you said earlier about using it at this point for a third timeout. If the team said they didn't touch the ball, just having your team's back of using that challenge card, maybe it's not going to change momentum for this set, but does it change the morale? Does it change one play of them realizing that they were doing the right things and that they can move forward from there? Some the positive energy in the huddle right now. The decision has been made, and the point will remain Louisville's point. After review, call stands point Louisville. Jolie Nagel, we could hear it, Steph. She asked for clarification. She said, who touched it? And the clarification from the official, I'm so excited that we're sitting right here, <laughs> was that he said, I don't have any visual evidence to overturn the play, which is why when you heard his announcement, he said call stands as opposed to saying call is confirmed. We got that up close view of that one. That's right. Hopefully. The folks at home might have been able to hear that ever so slightly. And after the what was effectively a timeout for Duke that did not result in a point for them, they get the point here from Keefe on the right side this time. And that's what we were talking about, those little change in momentums, those little things that motivate you could be a game changer. Kerry Keefe, a former All-ACC second team performer a year ago with the Blue Devils, also was a member of the All-Freshman team in the league a couple of years back. So far, she's doing most of her part. Seven for 19 for Keith, hitting 211. But needs some help, both offensively and defensively, which is easier said than done against this Louisville attack. And we see Keith coming out of the game now, and Quinn coming in to run a 6 2. And Cabello back to serve for the Cardinals here. With the service error. And now Avery Hamlin, true freshman from Austin, Texas. Like Anna DeBeer at the college level, she was a member of the 1000-1000 club in high school, Avery Hamlin at Lake Travis High School in the Texan capital. Charity Looper with another kill for Louisville here. And Looper traditionally hits from the left side, but in that serve receive rotation, she's gotten more and more comfortable hitting off the right side as the season has progressed. Again, it gives the Cardinals options to either stack on the left side or let Looper stay and swing off the right. Godshaw's body just got in the way of that ball to keep it alive as she was lying on the floor. That should the be the new definition of digging. Your yes. body just gets in the way of the ball. That's what it feels like sometimes. I suppose I should give her more credit than <laughs> I initially did. Hey, that's what you're trying to do. That's how we teach it when they're young. Just get in the path of the ball. Set point for Louisville here in set two. Sherman with two hands and a double contact. For exactly the reason you stated on that one, if you can't get two hands cleanly on the ball because she was going over the net with it, it probably was a ball better played with one hand. Keeps the fans on their feet for at least another moment. Here's Sherman to a tone. Can't quite do it just yet. Looper goes flying down to her right, but the whistle went for a net violation on Louisville, and it'll be another point to the Blue Devils. Net violation there, but I think worth calling out here is that the middle, Elo, stepped in and set that ball to her outside hitter on the second contact. Great play. There's Peyton Peterson. Was it in? It was not. Few groans from the fans who thought that was a close call, but no reaction from Danny Busboom Kelly on Louisville's bench, and we play on. And Duke has cut it down to an eight-point deficit. Maldonado Diaz puts an end to it there. Sofia Maldonado Diaz, kill number five. 
one of three Louisville players with five or more kills. And the Cardinals are two-thirds of the way to a... Thanks for that, Riley. One of two liberos in the country on that list. Makes you feel like it's unlikely to see a libero win at Steph, but how do you judge that field? How do you see that award shaping up over these final weeks of the season? Well, and let's relate it back to Anna getting her 1,000th dig and that not being what she's worried about. A lot of times this Player of the Year award goes to someone that's playing in the finals. So at this point, Elena wants to perform the best she can on the court. She wants to try to earn this award, but a lot of it depends on the success of her team as well. And so that is her main focus down the stretch. Yeah, of all the stats you can talk about in volleyball, and this applies to all sports, the only stat that really matters is wins. And Elena Scott will be hoping to lead her team to many more wins down the stretch of this year in hopes to your point that if they are among those final four teams in the NCAA tournament field, that maybe she could bring home that National Player of the Year award. Certainly would be a deserving final accolade in what has been a spectacular career for the hometown kid, Elena Scott, out of Mercy Academy here locally. And that's one of the other stories as we get a look at what's at stake as well for these two teams. Duke looking to beat a ranked opponent for the first time in six years, and Louisville looking to continue their winning streak. But that's part of the story as well for the senior class. That you have Anna DeBeer and Elena Scott, two hometown players, homegrown Louisville natives that grew up wanting to come make an impact with this program, and, and they have. And neither of them, Anna actually a little bit more than Elena, but neither of them were huge national top 10 recruits coming out of high school. And they were able to stay home, get an opportunity at their home team and make a huge difference in the program as a whole. Louisville with a block to put a point on the board here. The success of this Louisville program over the recent seasons has proven to everybody around the country that I think Louisville, Kentucky certainly is volleyball country. But what, what does it mean, Steph? I mean, you're a member of the local volleyball community to have these players from the city of Louisville. They are, they're setting such an example for young players across the city and across the greater Louisville community for a sport that continues to grow, continues to emerge, continues to get more media coverage and more attention from fans. It's not just football and basketball anymore if you're a Louisville fan. You've got to pay attention to this volleyball program because of how much winning they've done in recent years. And it's thanks in large part to those two Louisville natives that we've been talking about. And that's women's sports in general. I think the biggest thing about the growth of women's sports, of the WNBA, of the pro volleyball leagues that are coming into America, is that it gives young girls role models and mentors, people to follow. And here locally in Louisville, there's no one more relatable than Anna DeBeer and Elena Scott. And that even takes that, that mentor, that role model, idea to another level when you might see him at Kroger grocery shopping <laughs> or you're able to know that you've owned a Louisville Cardinal sweatshirt your whole life and that's the jersey that they're wearing. I think that just adds icing on the cake. Keith with an attack error for Duke to give Louisville another point. And it's not just Louisville volleyball players coming to Louisville. We've seen players from the youth ranks in the city going and playing across the country at the Division I level. Taylor Iser on Sunday will see for North Carolina out of Sacred Heart. One of those players. It is increasingly becoming a hotbed for the sport. And I think college programs and hopefully pro programs in the future do help build the love of the game, the popularity of the sport, and that can create volleyball hotbeds. Omaha, Nebraska is a volleyball hotbed because yes. of the success that Nebraska has had in Lincoln, obviously, but that area is a volleyball hotbed, not the biggest city in the United States, but a lot of great volleyball because of the success that their college team has had. Nikki Underwood able, unable to keep that ball in play for Duke gives Louisville another point to make it four to three. And maybe just to wrap up this conversation, Steph, that'll be a moment for everybody in Louisville to really celebrate what has been built here over the years and the decades when that national semifinal and national championship game are held 
at the KFC Yum Center downtown. It'll certainly be a sellout crowd. It'll be just a great cherry on top of what has been building over the years here in Derby City. And that's what you want for a Final Four, regardless of who is playing. And Ngazi Elo back to serve here for the Blue Devils. De Beer looking for kill number 11 and finding kill number 11. Took a couple of touches on its way through from Duke defensive players. And Duke has gone away from the 6-2. Keeping Keefe in the back row gives them a little bit more offense, but now it's also putting Quinn up as a blocker across from Anna DeBeer. And that kill brought some joy to, to the DeBeer contingent in the first row here at LNN Federal Credit Union Arena. Her family has been a staple in the crowd for many years here. There we saw Keefe out of the back row. And one of the few times that Elena Scott a little bit out of sorts in terms of receiving that ball defensively had to bend down to get underneath it and forced her senior teammate De Beer to head toward the stands to try and keep it alive. But credit to Keefe for the swing. There's Nikki Quinn. Played just a set at Pitt last weekend in the loss via the sweep for this Duke team. Cressy tooling the block there. I like we've talked about Louisville using different options tonight, trying a couple different things, patterns, people to see what pays off in the long run. I think Duke's doing the same thing, just in a little bit different ways, but they're giving freshmen a lot of opportunities tonight to play in this big match. And those are probably more long-term plays where Louisville's looking at the short-term plays right now, but I really like what they've done. Yeah, it's an interesting point you make there about the long-term view versus the short-term view. Certainly Jolene Nagel will be hoping that these young freshmen, like Nikki Quinn, who we mentioned a moment ago, Avery Hamlin, who's made an impact tonight, Godshaw, the libero, will continue to grow in the coming years and return this Duke program to the upper echelons of the ACC as Coach Nagel has that green card once again and is going to challenge that most recent point, her second challenge tonight. And if she is not correct this time, she'll be out of challenges. So we'll let Young Park explain to us the call first. Original call is antenna fall on Duke, point Louisville. Duke is challenging that uh, contact was made by the blocker. So what happened here is Keefe took a swing on the right side and the ball hit the antenna. They called it out on Duke, gave the point to Louisville. However, Keefe is saying, or Duke is saying, that it hit the block first and then hit the antenna, which looks like that might be the case here with how much we always want our blockers to press over, but in this case, if Looper maybe wasn't so far over, she could have gotten away with it, but it does look like it possibly hits Looper's hand or outside of her arm or of her wrist and then bounces into the antenna. Well, we heard Young Park give the explanation the first go around that there wasn't enough evidence to overturn the call on the first challenge for Jolene Nagel. I think there's enough evidence there to overturn this one and it's a quick review for Young Park as well. After the review, ball, antenna fall occurred off the blocker, so we're gonna reverse the call, point Duke. So a successful challenge from Nagel. I'm going to give a shout out to Young Park too. That's about the best I've heard an official explain to the crowd and to the viewing audience this season on what they were challenging and that was a tough one. That's a skill that I think officials across the country have grown more comfortable with over the course it's of the year. It's new this season, yeah. yeah. And it is certainly a benefit to fans everywhere. It's something more sports are doing, but I think even more sports could do. We see it in baseball now where umpires will announce to the crowd the review process or the result of the review. Any clarity that can be offered by officials adds to the product, adds to the ability of fans to understand what they're watching, and it just makes the whole thing better. If they didn't explain to me every penalty in an NFL game, <laughs> all I would have no idea what's going on every weekend. 
I wouldn't know a legal block in the back was a thing on a punt return, you know? I've learned so much from the officials, and I do think that's an important part of the game. If you know what's going on, you understand what's being called, it helps you understand the strategy, it helps you understand all the different things that are going on, and it makes you feel a little bit more like an insider. Yeah, absolutely. And we've talked about volleyball being a growing sport locally and nationally. Added education, added awareness and knowledge from people who are maybe tuning into volleyball for the first time just helps the sport continue on its growing trajectory. 100%. Louisville on trajectory to win this set. But Duke pretty close, down by six. But a point here to Louisville on another double contact. And that'll take us to a timeout. Make those digs and complete those plays. The touches make the digs easier, yes. which allow you to prolong those rallies. And they allow you to fire back on offense more effectively on your side a lot of the time as well. You said that so much more nicely and succinctly than I was You helped me able earlier with it. differently. <laughs> <laughs> And if it's not the blocks and the defense, it's been aces tonight for Louisville. Five of them now for the Cardinals. One of the other leading factors for their success. As Keith is unable to find the back corner there. Good shot, though, by Keith. Big block out there on her. She was able to go over the block, but just missed on the end line. 5-0 run, make it a 6-0 run, as a matter of fact, for Louisville, leading to a 10-point advantage for the Cardinals, and that leads Jolene Nagel to take a timeout. Well, we've talked about the upcoming pit match for Louisville on the night before Thanksgiving. High profile, top five match there, but they'll have a big test this weekend with North Carolina. It's part of a difficult schedule to come for the Cardinals that Riley will have a look at here. Riley Hammer. Yeah, so with all of the talk about postseason circulating, the city of Louisville with us hosting, we're going to look at the rest of Louisville's schedule, which starts on Sunday against UNC. Then they take on Virginia and Virginia Tech, and then they move back to the Yum Center for number one pit. And they close out the season against number seven Stanford as of right now in the standings. Jeff and Steph, do you think that matchup against Pitt is going to be an ACC regular season title preview? I'll, I'll let you answer the question first, Steph. Do you think that's... The ACC title feels like it'll be on the line that night when Pitt comes to town. I definitely think number one in the nation playing number three in the nation at the top of conference play. And conference play matters. Everybody wants to win a conference championship, but neither of those teams are in a worry about making the NCAA tournament. What they are fighting for is the ability to host through regionals. And so that matchup is huge. It puts Louisville to, like clearly into that top four, in my opinion, if they can win that match. And for Pitt, it secures their spot as number one. That's their next big match there. And I think that being in that top four for regionals is even more what that match is about than the conference title. Do you think a loss for either team in that matchup would knock them off that one seed line? It, it seems to me that the committee ought to take into account the quality of those two teams that they've shown all year long. Let's say Pitt comes in and beats Louisville on the road, giving Louisville a fourth loss on the season. Do you think that would knock them off that one seed line potentially? I don't think so, but it also might depend on what goes on. Nebraska and Wisconsin and Nebraska and Penn State both have to play too. And Wisconsin and Penn State are right on that cusp of trying to break into that top four. I think, you know, Creighton's in that top four right now, but they don't really have any big prove it matches left. So it's going to be really interesting for the committee and with Creighton's in that top four in the RPI is what I should specify, but they're still only fifth in the ABCA rankings. And so it's gonna be interesting how that top four dynamic plays out. I may be ACC biased. I think Louisville and Pitt, pending that it's a good match on that Wednesday, both should be hosts. 
But again, if we have some upsets against Nebraska, there could be someone else that's really vying to get in there. And then let's not forget about Louisville going out to Stanford. It will be their first conference trip out to the West Coast. That is not easy. We saw Stanford struggle with that early in the season coming to the East Coast in ACC play. And there's also the potential hangover effect from that pit match. I mean, there's so much anticipation. And dinner. Right. <laughs> to add to it, yeah. The the tryptophan will be working overtime there if it makes a, an effect on, on Louisville as they head west. Duke another time out here with the Cardinals ahead by 13. But we talk a lot, Steph, you and I, over the course of this season and last season, too. We've talked about conference tournaments and adding excitement to the end of the year, what value a conference tournament might add to the, the ACC. I think that point remains, but that's not to say there in those tiers. So Stanford, Georgia Tech, Pitt, and Louisville made it into that top tier where then they play those higher RPI games, those big games for the championship at the end of the season is the goal of that. With the ACC getting so deep, now you see Florida State ranked, SMU ranked, you know, there's probably other teams that should be in there. North Carolina has been ranked at different times this season. I want to see an ACC conference tournament. I think you put at least eight, maybe 10 or 12 teams in one location and really let them battle it out in that last week. One other thing that we talked about a little tonight is just also the, the game and having that fan experience. And I think there is nothing like a good conference tournament as a fan. Yeah, absolutely. I think the entertainment value that a conference tournament would provide would be immense as the sport of volleyball continues to grow. And then also, it's an opportunity for teams to continue to add to their resume. We were having a conversation about Louisville and Pitt remaining on that one seed line after their matchup toward the end of the year. Let's imagine a scenario where one of them did fall out of the one seed line because of that loss. Well, they potentially would have opportunities to atone for that and get back um, into that top seed conversation in a conference tournament with all those quality teams facing off against one another. It's what we see in basketball every March. Maybe it will be what we see in volleyball every November down the years. And as Duke with a point back here from swing. Richardson. Yeah, yeah it's great line swing around the block there by Richardson. We saw her start this match and then take a little bit of a break while some freshmen got some opportunities, but still a leader for this squad. Rachel Richardson up over 200 points on her season tonight after registering a pair of kills, but not the hitting percentage that she would want, frankly, for Duke as a team. That trend that we pointed to earlier in the broadcast has continued. Louisville hitting over 400, and Duke at 023. And another trend for Louisville continues. After they had 10 aces against Boston College last weekend, that is their sixth of the night, and it comes from Alana Bankston. The sophomore off the bench laid on to get a big cheer. And for Alana Bankston, the first ace of her season as well. Might have been part of the reason for that celebration. Louisville a point away from an 11th ACC sweep, a fifth consecutive sweep, and a sixth consecutive win overall. Here's Richardson back behind the service line for Duke, although looks like there's a little confusion about a potential substitution here as Barrow was about to come in. I think earlier in the match, Barrow was going in for Richardson, but I think she may have already been in this set in a different rotation. Regardless, Peyton Peterson with the opportunity to end it. As the Cardinals storm onto the court, it is a sixth consecutive win. 
a fifth straight win via the sweep, an 11th sweep overall in ACC play. And now it is on to senior day for this Cardinals team. The senior class that has led them, them to unprecedented heights will be on. Paint on a mother gonna never grenade. Boss, bro, kill another bro, relieve another bro. Yo, yo, kill out there, guy. Bro, I'm gonna go around. 